Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Have a Pint. Today we have Surly, First Avenue, plus one. Uh, it is a golden ale. What's up, buddy? What's up, little buddy? Uh, it is. Hi, buddy. You're already purring like crazy. It takes nothing to make that little son of a bitch purr. Actually, you could be crushing him. He'll purr. Anyways, it's 5.1% alcohol by volume. Uh, IBUs is not listed. It's not going to be very much. At most, it'll be 20 IBUs. Uh, yeah, it does not say on here what the IBUs are. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be much. Uh, it gets an average rating of 3.47. Uh, the description on Untapped reads, Brewed in collaboration with First Avenue, the last great American rock club, we present Plus One, a classic, easy-drinking golden ale, appropriate for whenever and wherever the music hits you. I don't know if by rock club they actually mean metal club, because I know Surly is very much into metal as a company. In fact, in their brewery, a lot of mu music that they play are, is metal music. Uh, it has a different description on here. Dearly beloved, an old minute... Minneapolis bus station, an abrasive factory in the burbs. From these humble beginnings sprang the last great rock club in the country and one of America's leading craft breweries. A collaboration just makes sense. First Avenue and Surly Brewing Co. are proud to present Plus One, an easy drinking classic style golden ale that's perfect for the entry, the main room, or anywhere the music hits you. Plus one, you're on the list. Brewed and canned by Surly Brewing Company in Minneapolis and Brooklyn Center, uh, Minnesota. So this was canned on 4-3, so I assume it was uh, brewed back in April. Uh, I'm going to guess it's still okay. It was on clearance, but to be fair, back in April, it's only four months old. I got my youngest two directly behind me playing, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, I have not actually had a lot of golden ales. I am curious, though. Uh, I think I have seriously had two or three examples of the style if it'll come up I can see what the biggest examples of the style are and I think honestly if there's any I've had it's probably Belgian beer styles Beer de Gard is a very underrated style here in the States. I love Beer de Gard, but I love Saisons and Whitbers, so it only makes sense. And Golden Ales are actually not listed as a style. Is it any shock that nobody really uses your advocate anymore. Actually, I'm wondering if I can look up Golden Ales on Untapped. Duvel. I don't think I've ever had Duvel, actually. Okay, I've had Big Wave. I don't have it rated, but I've had Big Wave. And that was pretty good. Uh, apparently I've had Summer Love from Victory Brewing. I know I've had some Victory Brewing. I didn't realize I had that. I've had Golden Drac, which was pretty good. When did I have this? Back. 
seven years ago that I had Summer Love. It was when I went down to uh, uh, Blondells, I guess, is another way of putting it, too. When I went down to uh, Vegas, Summer Ale is not a golden ale, it's a pale ale. Oh, there's a Belgian triple. But the first few are Belgian strong golden ale. Uh, so I've had, like, I've had Prankster as well. I've had, like, three examples. At least towards the top of the list here. Tuna. That's a pale ale, though. But, um, basically, golden ales are pale ales, but much lighter. Let's see if, with how much I got in here, I can twirl this. And I can, but it's very difficult. So it's very see-through. I had probably a finger's worth of head. It actually didn't have a lot of head. There's some bubbling going on, and I got my tall grass pint. This is, uh, besides Nebraska Brewing Company, this is the closest to a regular pint I have, but it does have a little bump here. That uh, I have one straight up pint glass, I have this, and then the rest of the perfect pints. Okay, that has a lot of spicy notes to it. I kind of like when they tell you what spice notes you should be able to pick out of a beer, but I kind of like when they don't, because it kind of forces you to do it. But... But I also like when they do it because then you can try to pick those out. It's incredibly light. It's incredibly good for what it is, though. There's a lot of spicy notes up front. It's incredibly clean. Very crisp beer. All the spice is up front, though. And in the middle, there's really nothing. And on the end, there's really nothing. It's clean and crisp. For some reason, my lighting just changed. I gotta get a light for right up in front here. But, honestly, it's a golden ale. There's not much to it. Um, this was one of the ones I bought on clearance. I think it was $5.99 for the four-pack. And hopefully they're not getting rid of it, because it is pretty good. Maybe it's just because uh, the ones they had were uh, canned on in April. But... It's pretty good, and it's surly. What I appreciate about surly is they're pretty much, as far as what has come into here, into this state, surly is pretty much the first ones, uh, and I could be very much wrong, who did canned pints. And as we've established on this channel, only the best beer comes in canned pints. But, no, my favorite beer, my fa favorite uh, presentation is can, and my favorite size is uh, pint. But pint's really the biggest you're ever going to find in a can. <clears throat> Cans are either really going to be that 12 ounce or going to be this. I haven't really noticed anything different. I could be very wrong. I have for other forms, uh, like some liqueurs come in like some 8 ounce cans, but I haven't seen that for beers. I, you know, like, I think it's Jenny's Cream or something comes in like 8 ounce bottles. 
But I, I think that would be neat to see some bigger beers come in like eight ounce cans because I hate bombers as you know because I don't want that much of a particular beer at one time make that shit a four pack I can have it four different times you know I pop a bomber I gotta drink the whole goddamn thing that night that's what I hate about a bomber and at the same time when it's a really really big beer I also don't really want 12 ounces of it, more than likely. I might, I might, if it is that damn good, but at the same time I don't because I'm going to want something else and I don't want that to be the only thing I have that night. If there's 8 ounce cans, you know, of like KBS, hey, I can have other beer. You know, they make 4 pack 12 ounce bottles of KBS, why not 8 ounce uh, 6 pack cans? I could have one of it and have like two or three other beers. You know, when you go out drinking, most places when it's a bigger beer, they give you smaller, pour, like, you know, a lot of things they pour 12 ounces of. Some things it's like 8 or 10 ounces. Some places, you know, will say 16 or 24 ounce. Which, 24 is bullshit, because unless you're drinking incredibly cheap, you're not going to want 24. When I go out, though, to be fair, I don't usually get 16. And like I said, my favorite place is Casual Pint, and they offer a 5-ounce version. And 9 times out of 10, no matter how big the beer is, I'm probably going to do the 5-ounce version, because it means when I go out, I can, I'm not limited to just, like, three or four different beers I can have five, six seven beers and barely feel it because there's another you know, five ounce draws, they're five ounce pours and it's still big enough that you get out of it what it is you know, sorry I got a cramp going, you're going to have to deal with seeing this white leg and I mean a white leg But yeah, when I, this is the best to me, uh, is pint cans. And I haven't had too many golden ales, but this is definitely one of the better ones. This is something I could definitely take a four pack to the pool and drink all four. The thing about it is the regular price on it is $10 for the four pack and whilst I know that's not that expensive uh, for me that's kind of expensive but it's it, it honestly isn't that bad and I would consider it like the next time time I know I'm gonna go to a pool but I I can bring beer I'm stopping at a place to pick up beer they have this it's definitely going to be a contender, depending on what I want, what kind of flavoring I want out of a beer, or if I want to try something new. N no, probably in that situation, I don't want something new because I'm going to be drinking out of a can. So, this would be one of the better options to me. Or hell, to sit out on your porch or your patio and drink. This is a beautiful option for that. You could literally down all four cans in a three hour time span and probably barely fill it, if at all fill it. It's only 5.1% alcohol, it's, it's fairly low. Uh, it gets a 3.47. And keep in mind, yeah, there's 
more likely you see like four, four out of five star ratings for me on things that you know might get three, three and a half stars. But I've said it before. I try to do it by style. Like I can't compare this to like if I'm having a KBS. Of course, KBS is five star. It's a brilliant beer. Uh, Evil Twins Bozo beer. Five star beer. Absolutely beautiful. There's like ten different flavors in there, and you can distinguish each and every one of them. And it is an absolutely beautiful beer. This. There's some spice at the front of the palate, and other than that, it's crisp and clean. Well, that would make for a horrible Imperial Stout. Whilst for a Golden Elk, that's pretty damn good. Uh, it's certainly not perfect. It could have more uh, spice notes to it. Could also be unfiltered, but hey, that's me. I'd love to see sediment in there, but I don't see shit. It's hazy. There's a little haze to it, but there there's no sediment. But I'm saying for the style, a one to five for a golden ale. It it probably hits at a four for me. Um, with that said, if you're on a scale of imperial stout. You know, a five-star golden ale doesn't compete with a three-star imperial stout. Well, maybe slightly, because I would, I'd probably choose the golden ale over the stout at that point, because I would just be disappointed with what I'm tasting if I'm choosing the imperial stout. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be enjoying the golden ale, because it's a beautifully brewed golden ale. But that's the thing to me. I, let's go to my glass. For a golden ale, it's very well done. Uh, it's a magnificent brew for what it's supposed to be. So for that, I give it a four star. Whereas, you know, if you're just like, here's beer, right on scale of one to five, as far as beer goes, I'd honestly probably give it a three. But on a scale for golden ales, you know, if somebody's going for a golden ale, I'd say this is a four. Like I said, it could have more uh, spice characteristic. You do want to have you know, areas on your palate where it's just crisp and clean. At the end of the day, it's a light style of beer. You're going to want that. You're not going to want something, you know, you're not going to want spice all the way through your palate. Because it would detract on what kind of beer it is, if that makes sense. Anyways, would I buy this again? Hell yeah, I'd buy this again. This is a good goddamn golden ale uh like I said I think it's a 9.99 six pack or four pack <clears throat> actually it might even be an 8.99 uh four pack for that price hell yeah I'll pick it up again especially for hot summer days you know for hanging out by the pool or the beach or something or even in the pool or the beach. Uh, yeah. Four star beer. Hell yeah, I'll pick it up again. It's the episode. Till next time. Prost. <laughs>